Welcome to Spirit Nerds TV, where souls unite and wisdom ignites. Get ready to delve into a spiritual adventure like no other as we unlock the secrets of the divine through sermons that captivate the curious minds and passionate heart. Join our tribe of enlightened seekers as we explore the realms of faith, knowledge, and transformation. Let the Spirit Nerds community be your compass as we explore this extraordinary quest. Get ready to expand your spiritual understanding and embrace the realities of the Holy Spirit. When you see a man, when you see somebody, a man, somebody like Ugochuku pray for six hours, leading people in prayer for six hours, I will have you to understand that that thing is by a prayer power. Say after me, prayer power. If you like, try it. Somebody said that this thing these people are doing, that they are learning tongues. They, they are learning this thing. They will not be doing sha la 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 The man was doing sha la la You know, you can do it too, for one hour. But the day you will know is by a spirit is when you do it for six hours. Even your mouth will pain you. Physically, your mouth will pain you after six hours. That's if you, two hours, your mouth will be paining you. But people will sit one place and pray for 24 hours. Their mouth is not paining them. When we finished the last 24 hours, as they were closing, I told them, can we go a little more? If I tell you, can we go a little more, you will go. Huh? You see, the reason why many people remain the same is that they don't know how to tarry. They are always in a hurry to live, hurry to live. This thing you have been living, have you not noticed your life have not changed? All the time you are in a hurry, all the time. When God said, many people, when God said, uh -huh, I'm here now, he found out that they have left. So what they felt that they thought they received something is just an invitation. They gave you invitation and you left. It's an invitation to tarry, not an invitation to run. Huh? Have you not been praying or worshipping and you now felt something? Emmanuel, have you not felt something? I know. And you now went and manifested. And people fell on the ground. Is it not true? How many people fell on the ground? <laughs> you see, that thing you felt is not invitation to live. It's invitation to come closer. Come closer. Sometimes if you want to touch a higher dimension of what you just experienced, you might have to stay there for six hours. Huh? I did not know this. So, initially when I feel it, I will leave. And then I will go and minister. Something will happen. And then, after some time, it will reduce. I'm going up and down until one day I learned to stay one place. When I felt it, I stayed there. I said, Holy Ghost, keep me, help me to stay in this canopy. I said, one hour passed. Two hours passed. Three passed. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight. By the time it was getting to eight, even the room was saturated. Hey! The same people that I told I, went, I want to go and pray, when I wore my clothes and I was coming out, they could no more stand my presence. Why? If you interact with somebody, you come out with the presence of that person. You start smelling like that person. And the more you stay with that person, the more you are able to trap what you experienced in that place. So Jesus will tell you, tarry. He, did not say, he didn't say for two hours. He said, tarry until. Turn to your neighbor say, tarry until. How many hours? How many days? How many months? How many years? So you that is coming and going, where did you see the instruction from? That's why your life is like this. Satan knows that the noise in our soul is too much that we cannot stay and quieting it down so that God will begin to walk. It is when you come to the still waters that a measure of the glory of God will begin to come upon you. Eh? Something that can soak itself into the clothing that you are wearing. Eh? Something that you can bring and touch something like this and another man cannot touch it. 
Hmm? Are you doubting what I'm saying? Can you touch this one that I touched? Meanwhile, there are days that if I touch it, if I wake up in the morning, maybe I ate apple in the morning, ate yam beans in the afternoon. Then in the evening, I used, um, what is this one you say you like, chuka? That one they sell. Huh? No. Um, shawarma. You now use shawarma to do evening. Then you use semo to do night. <laughs> and then they call you by nine and say, Pastor, somebody is about to die. You now say in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> oh God, you are in the barracks, so you have to realize. In the barracks, we sleep with our eyes open. I'm not saying you should not rest, but you should rest in such a way that you can be summoned to action anytime. Eh? When they wake you from the sleep and say, Somebody is about to die, like Jesus, you say, Peace be still. And everywhere we stand still. As I'm speaking, angels are descending. They are descending in their numbers. They are descending in their numbers. They are descending in their numbers. They are descending. Some of you will go back with some of those angels. I mean, they will go back with you. Because God, God will bring many of you into the prayer ministry. No, prayer is beyond a commandment, a facility to build yourself as a believer. Prayer is also a ministry. And when a man has a prayer ministry, one of the first signs that you have been inducted into the prayer ministry is that you must have a prayer angel. It's a must. And I can tell you three things that those prayer angels will do. But that's not my business. Some of, if you will go back and remain consistent in keeping the altar of prayer that others will come and pray with you, People will come and pray with you. Then you need a prayer angel to go back with you. Sometimes when that prayer angel is around, huh? when you tell people to pray, if I tell you to pray and we are praying, what you will notice is that some of them will be, they will carry liquid. They will carry liquid and be giving to people they will be drinking. Once you drink it, you start praying, you cannot explain it. You drank something. That's what my brother um, Lawrence Oyo calls bowls of fire. That is what how you see it. When you drink it, you start praying as if you start. When you leave that meeting, you become normal. How, how many of you have tried it? You now went inside your room. You wanted to do bowl of fire. It did not work. I say you went to a meeting where a prayer angels feed everywhere, and before you know it, they began to give you drink to drink to drink to drink. Suddenly your posture will be mutated. Somebody will keep his eye like this. Kaya, 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 kaya. A small lady will go and hold the pulpit like this and want to tear it in toto. Hey! I saw my sister one day. She was leading prayer. She was moving like this. Because me, I know her. You, you don't know her. I know her in the house. She is the last born. And she used to do last born like this until you give her the mic. When you give her the mic, she'll be walking like this. <laughs> that thing is by a spirit. Come and try it. Some people will slap you and say, Oh, God, where did you learn this one? <laughs> but me, that is with her in the house, know something she is doing. If you tell her you will lead, lead prayer for one hour, she will use two days and prepare. Sometimes I will be in the house from the night. You know now, what we'll be, what we'll be hearing in this room, in the other room, you will not like to stay with people like me because there is nothing all the time spiritual business. If you come and tell me, uh, uh, I want to ask you some questions. 
I will not answer you until I've seen that you have prayed. Because you know why you have many questions? You, are, you don't pray. If you do six hours every day for 21 days, your question will reduce at least to half. So the reason why you have many questions, why is it that I sleep, this one is not working, why will it work when you can't pray? So when you are doing 12 hours, you wake up in the morning by 5 a.m. I heard that they use face marks or nose marks, whichever one, and you are working in an office. As far as I'm concerned, that nose marks is a call for people to come back to prayer. As far as I'm concerned. But we have not seen what God gave to us and we allow Satan to be using it. You are in the office, you are in the bank and you are wearing nose marks or face marks as a worker there. And then inside the nose marks. But you are wearing what? If one million believers in Nigeria will do this, two hours in their workplace with their nose marks, Satan will remove that nose marks by himself. We will use the same thing and fight him. But you have not found out the reason. You put it in your mouth and you are doing like this. The nose mask is for prayer. It's for prayer. Say prayer. prayer. All the years you have been running around from prayer, God has brought you here finally. You can't run. Some of you, you will see me. I will appear in your dream. I'm telling you what is going to happen real. I'm telling you, you want to, when you go back, you want to relax. And I will have to warn you that this is the best of my face you can see. Some people say, I don't laugh, I don't smile. I'm, am I not smiling now? This is the best you can see it. See. Mike, I don't like this you now. The one I like is still in the future. The one captured in the volume of the books. That's why we tarry. Any, anything that you leave less than it eh, is a disappointment as far as heaven is concerned. I want to bring you people help today. Many of us would have remained the way we are except that we touched the power of God. And there is something I've also found out, that there are intensities of the work of the Spirit in a man's life. So if you touch the first layer and you camp there, very soon you will notice that the challenges coming around you is so much that what you have cannot answer to them. Very soon you will notice that the people coming to you now are no more people with headache. There are people with cripples. Huh? We are having service and a lady wants to die before us. What do you do to that one? You will have to find a solution to it. Somebody will chat you from South Africa, Zimbabwe, and tell you that COVID-19 is killing them now. What are you going to do? I will pick up the phone and I will just a voice note. You devil of darkness, I charge you, live that life now. I know you know my name. I know you know my name. Anybody here that is suffering an affli affliction that is as a result of the arrow of the enemy, we uproot it now and send it back to sender. I say we uproot it now and send it back to sender. I say we uproot it and send it back to sender. So these are the witnesses of, and it is important that everybody is witnesses of, but there is witnesses unto. And the witnesses unto is what only power can make a man into. So people begin to tell a story of, I've seen people tell the story of, there is a white man, 
I, if I say this thing, some of you might know. But there is a white man that writes a book. And the man is very graced and anointed. And his job is to chronicle what generals have done. Eh? That one you are thinking. That's the one. I did not call the name. But what is there is witnesses of. There is no power in the pages. When you read men like Leonard Ravenhe, you will run into fasting and prayer. That we mean in the pages of the words that Leonard wrote are the flames of prayer. The flames of the burden that he carried. It can drive you to the place of prayer to seek out the things that he's speaking about. Ah, you can hear about the prayer that men prayed. How, how John Hyde was able to pray and, and he was able to bring down a nation. And you heard about John Welch. All those stories does not benefit you. But when you read about the, a man called Edward McKendry Bounce, E.M. Bounce, you'll be reading the... When I was reading the pages of the, book, the books he wrote on prayer, he said that prayer ascends by fire. Hey! I was in the library, in the divisional library. My heart born. Hey! I left that place and went on a three days fasting. I said, why is my prayer ascending as smoke? Is, there is no fire in it. Where is the fire of my sacrifice? I need fire. I need fire. Just because of what a man said. I wrote something on Facebook one time. Somebody commented on it. And I went on what the person commented. And said, well done. The person now said that he read it. What kind of man I am? That when he read it, as soon as he picked the phone and read it, the hands began to shake and vibrate. He dropped it. He stopped. He took it back again to read. He started again. What did I do? Say like this. There is nothing in it. It is the power that is there. You know the difference between some of the things we are teaching and showing you and what others are saying? It's not, sometimes we might even say the same thing, but it will not propel you to do anything. People are tired of hearing and hearing, and there is no energy to take them to where they are going. But you cannot hear my voice and stay still. Eh? When I speak, all the warriors will be awoken. The mighty men will arise and take their bow. They will take their tangent. They are marching orders coming from Zion. Oh, Bacchus. Let me show you something small before we fly. <laughs> show me verse 49. Verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of what? Jerusalem. Until what? You know, um, scripturally, this is post-resurrection. If it is post-resurrection, it should mean that everything has been done. Why is Jesus telling them to wait? He has given them the lecture. He has given them the pattern. He has risen from the dead. But he said to them, what? Tarry ye in Jerusalem. See, brothers and sisters, there is a measure of endowment you need to execute your destiny. The problem is that many times we touch something, touch something, and then we stop. Now, you have touched something, but it's not commensurate to the calling you have. And you can only be a witness unto Jesus by your calling when you have laid hold on that measure and dimension of power. It takes to witness Jesus in that manner. Are you with me? If you are with me, say amen. amen. See, Jesus wants you to bear a witness of holiness. Let's assume that's what it is in your campus. Uh, 
Let's assume your campus is at Oweri. Say after me, Oweri. Uh, the demon of vanity, the principality of vanity, of immorality. I read something. They said that that place is the headquarters of abuse, drug abuse in south, in the southern, and somebody is there. Huh? And he said he's doing ministry. That is the way you will, you will be cold, like cold water. You'll be doing all the things you are doing. If, if demons that came from the water do you like this, you will just fall down. So that kind of man will have to receive the capacity to bear witness. So that person come and pray for three hours, but yet he's still subject to masturbation. Demons still disturb him in the night. You are doing something, you know, but the witness to the territory, the witness to the people, you have not received the power to do that. Or God called you, and you found yourself where there are cripples everywhere, blind eyes, deaf ears, all kinds of things. And you came, and you preached the Bible, and then people cried and gave their life to Christ. You know, it is powerful. But that is not the witness that is needed at that point. The witness that is needed is for you to command all the cripples, and they begin to walk. When they start walking, you will now preach your message. In other places, it might be to cast out devils. In other places, it might be to break a yoke. For some people, the witness that they need to bear is the witness of the power that God has given to us to make wealth. The last person that tried to succeed financially, Satan struck him till he began to beg. And you now that is about to rise, the demon has started warning you. You must arise by a power beyond that.